Let's go to the moon. Are you ready to go to the moon? Yes. Good, because you can. Let me show you how can you. You know, two months ago, I woke up one morning and I felt really bad. I felt bad. I had a nightmare. In my dreams, I was polluting the air. 22 tons of CO2 were escaping my house into the air. By the way, this is true. My house, unfortunately, generates 22 tons of CO2 every year. I felt that I needed to do something about it, and I wanted to do it myself. So, what did I do? I went to my friends on uh, Facebook, and I posted a short uh, note. I said, I am willing to build my first educational solar tree. I want to generate solar power. I want to make my own energy. Will you help me? Sure enough, less than 24 hours, I had a group of volunteers. Shai, Shaul, um, Tzach, Gil. They all came to me and said, you know what, Yankee, we had a dream as well. We want to build a solar tree. We want to generate energy. We want to do it ourselves. So we started. And you know, it took us less than two months, and we came up with designs, ideas, some very preliminary market research, and we came up with a solar tree. Let me share the tree with you. You know, it's actually a product. If we wanted, we could really sell it right now, because I do believe that in Africa, we should replace all the solar generators, sorry, the diesel generators, with solar trees. It makes a lot of sense. I also believe that if you go to the Galil and build your own house off-grid, and you want to be really off-grid, you don't want a generator, you don't want a diesel generator, you want a solar tree. And the funny part about this whole story, and the great part about, about this whole story, is that we have done it in less than two months. We came with a product. We did it ourselves. Welcome to the age of do-it-yourself. Welcome the maker's movement. You, I, Everybody here can do much more today. And this is what's so fun about technology. This is what's so fun about our ability to do. We can actually generate the next magic. Let's see. And I feel that we are very lucky. We are very lucky to live in the age that enables each one of us to do much more. Some call it the third industrial revolution. Some call it the maker's movement. Some simply call it do it yourself. But I will share with you, in the next 10 minutes, so many technologies that you can do yourself right now. Let's go ahead. I'll tell you the next story. Uh, I like to play chess. I'm not a good chess player, but I like to play chess. And I'm very proud to play chess with my son. And unfortunately, last time, he won. <laughs> so I felt really embarrassed. And I said, I have to come with a new plan. How should I change the... the uh, the game now. So I decided to print my own chess set. I wanted to generate, to print my own chess set. If I lived 50 years ago, 100 years ago, what would I have done? I would go to a carpenter or become a carpenter or get my wood and carve my, pitch piece, uh, my, my chess. But today we live in a, new, uh, in a new era and I can actually print my chess. I can use 3D printing to print my set. Isn't it wonderful? Welcome the third revolution, the third industrial revolution. Because when the first carpenter generated its own piece, he generated one piece. And at the second revolution, we learned how to generate so many nice pieces that all look the same. And now each one of us can generate his own great, unique, chess set, and you can actually print it. It's all becoming now a game of download and print. It's all becoming now a game of information. The physical world around us is changing. So I wanted my chess set. Where do I start? You know me already. Where did I go? Of course, I went to Facebook. And, you know, 10 seconds after I went to Facebook, I met a new old friend, Sefi. And Sefi told me, you know, Yankee, it's great. I have a desire to print things myself. And I'd like to do things myself. And I have an idea for you. If you want to print your chess, you should go to Kickstarter. Go to Kickstarter. This is do-it-yourself funding over there. 
There is a wonderful new printer out there by Formslab. Next generation, quite, uh, I mean, really not expensive. They're making it right now. Go and buy your uh, printer. Go and pre-order your printer on Kickstarter. So this is exactly what I've done. I went to Kickstarter, and I supported that project. I was so proud to be the one who uh, took uh, Formslab, the printer manufacturer, from $1.9 million something over $2 million. By the way, they only wanted to, uh, uh, to receive, to, they only wanted to fund the project for $100,000, but they generated over $2 million funding their project. So welcome to Detail Self Funding. You don't need a banker, you don't need an investor, you don't need anything. All you need to have is a good idea, the ability to present it, go out there, present it, this is do-it-yourself funding. So I became a proud uh, backer of this project, and I'm still waiting for my printer. It should be in the mail. Um, I guess it will arrive in a few days. But I was impatient. I really wanted my, my, my chess. So I called Sefi again, and I told Sefi, Sefi, let's go and print my chess. And Sefi said, Come on, I'll, I'll take you to XLN. Go and find XLN. XLN is a great new nonprofit organization here in Israel. They believe that 3D printing, 3D printing will be the future of the startup nation. What we have done with electronics and software and computing, they believe we will be doing with 3D printing. 3D printing is the way to change the future, and we in Israel, we want to change the future. So what they have done, they have created a network of 3D uh, printing uh, places all over Israel. You can go there and print your own design. Kids go there and just learn how to do 3D printing. Isn't it wonderful? We sat down, I print my first chess rook. It's a blue rook, it's a very nice one. It is marked Y with my name, and I just lost it 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so please, if one of you have found a uh, purple, not purple, uh, a blue rook, it should be out there somewhere uh, around us. Anyway, this, this is just my first rook. I will print the whole uh, set, don't worry. And uh, uh, just to connect do-it-yourself printing with do-it-yourself education, my long-term plan is to actually take the printer I'm going to receive from um, uh, Kickstarter, from Formslab, and actually make it part of this whole new generation, this whole new uh, movement of do-it-yourself here uh, in Israel, together with uh, XLN. So are you ready? We are living in an area, in a new generation, if you want something, if you can dream it, you can actually print it. Think about our future with 3D printing. It's not the same. I have, two, uh, I have three good, good friends who had a dream of their own. Yariv, Kfir, and Yonatan wanted to go to the moon. So what have they done? If you want to go to the moon, what do you do? You go to Facebook. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know. I mean, but this is what they have done. So they wanted to go to the moon. They wanted to compete on the Google Lunar X Prize competition. And it was Yariv going on Facebook saying, hi, guys, I want to go to the moon. I want to build a spaceship. An Israeli one, I want to do it myself. Anybody with me? And yes, Kfir and Jonathan have joined him. And it has become an amazing project. They met in a bar in Cholon. Somebody told me it's the only bar that there is in Cholon. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it's still there. When we land on the moon, we know where we're going to celebrate. So they started the design, came with the uh, uh, idea, and today, SpaceIL, what they have created, has become a national project. Kids all over the Israel allow themselves today to dream about going to the moon. They build spaceships. They play with the idea of going to the moon. Somebody once told me that there are three things that actually attract kids to science. Those are dinosaurs, robots, and astronauts. So we have a plan now, unless we have a volunteer who wants to go on the, uh, on the spaceship, we're looking for a dinosaur to, put, uh, to take with us. Uh, it's an unmanned spaceship. But yes, we are going to the moon. And we're not just us going to the moon, it's the state of Israel, it's the people of Israel, it's the kids of Israel who are actually going to the moon these days. Even uh, that kid, this young kid has joined us, uh, our president, Perez, we call him our number one volunteer. Uh, he is now going with us to the moon, and it has really become 
something which the industry is behind us, volunteers, volunteers are behind us, the academy is behind us. Uh, I'm extremely optimistic today. By the year 2015, I believe that Israel will have a flag on the moon and we will become the third... <laughs> we will become the third country to actually land on the moon unless the Chinese are there before us. <laughs> but you know what? Even if we are the fourth, last time I counted Chinese, Israelis, being forced will be a, a great achievement. So you can make your own energy, you can print your own reality, you can go to the moon, but guys, this is just the beginning because we are now living in the age of do-it-yourself and we can do many more things all together in education, in uh, social uh, organization, uh, technology, printing, reality, Everything is changes, and the, f the, the nice part about this change that it is acceptable, accessible to each and every one of us. It is not the big brother, it, it is not the big governments or the big organizations. It's us doing the small things now, taking technology one step uh, ahead. Dream it, make it. Let me start with education. Uh, let's start with do-it-yourself education. I mean, if you look at Coursera, if you look at Khan Academy, if you come to TED, you definitely understand what I'm talking about. Education has been democratized. The knowledge is out there. Go and get it. Nothing holds the knowledge back anymore. Information is knowledge is available for everybody. Starting from Google and Wikipedia, going to all these sites, do-it-yourself education. I think it's a great trend, and we don't have excuses anymore. If you don't know something, if you wish to know something, go and find it. It's out there. It's reachable. Do-it-yourself computing. Uh, we are seeing these days the ability of kids to build supercomputers. And I find it amazing. Ten years ago, supercomputers were assets of big nations, assets of big armies. But supercomputers today can be built by teenagers. All you have to do is to buy a $35 Raspberry Pi Connect 64 Raspberry Pis like that in a Lego case, and here you go, you have a supercomputer. This is a revolution, this is great. It will change whatever we know about computing and about the democratization of technology in our places. Do-it-yourself biology. When was the last time you played with your own genes, with your own DNA? <laughs> well, if you are here on TED, the answer I should have heard is recently. Because everybody here is somehow a geek or a freak or uh, a technology <laughs> nerd or... Uh, okay? Um, next time, uh, on your application note to a TED uh, day will be, have you played with your genes? What are the recent results? You should have done it. The point is, he has, I'm sure many have, the point is that you can do it. You can go and test your DNA. You can go and buy kits for playing with DNA and genomes, and you can buy compilers for DNA. You can actually look at biology, as the synthetic biology, as the equivalent to programming human bodies, human genomes, as what we have done with computers for the last 40, 50 years. And this is becoming now a do-it-yourself technology. You can play with it. So I was building my tree, I was playing with my genome, I was uh, doing many things, and I needed money to do so and maybe you need money to do so. So this is my last uh, do-it-yourself technology I'm going to present to you today, which is do-it-yourself money. You can print your own money. <laughs> yes, you can, it's not a joke. And uh, if you haven't heard about Bitcoin, it's a great revolution. It will change completely the way we do business, the way we look at currency. Bitcoin is the new gold. Instead of taking your letters and, uh, and hats and whatever and going to look for gold and dig gold somewhere, Go ahead and spend energy on digging virtual money. It's almost the same, and you can use it. And this fine coin has today, um, you can replace it with euros or dollars or whatever, so you can actually use it as money. You have so many sites that already accept bitcoins as currency. So you can actually go ahead and print the devices to generate and print your own money, and everybody can do it. So I have a plan for you. When you finish TED today, go home. Take a decision, what is your next dream? Is it going to the moon? Is it 
going to Mars. Whatever your dream is, start with building a solar tree. Generate your own energy. Use this energy to power your Bitcoin miner. Your Bitcoin miner will mine money for you. Use the money to buy the components. Build your own supercomputers. Go ahead, explore your DNA, play with it, get educated, control your future, it's in your hands. The big brother is actually us, and it's nice. We are a collective big brother, and we share this power. So go ahead and just do it yourself. Thank you.